Okay, so let's define a variable called time to eat and assign a boolean value. False. Okay, so time to eat has the value false, boolean value. Now let's test that variable. If time to eat is equal to true, we're going to say it is time to eat. Otherwise, you say, please wait a little bit more. Okay, so let's try that out. Uh, and as you can see, it said, please wait a little bit more because time to eat is false. So false, is it equal to true? Well, that's not the case. So it's false. Therefore, whatever is in the else block gets executed. Please wait little bit more. Now, if that change that to false, what do you expect to get? Okay, time to eat is false. Time to eat is false equals false. That'll be true. So it's going to say it is time to eat. As you can see. Now let's change the back. Now, there's a shorthand for this. You can just remove the equal true and just say if time to eat. And whatever time to eat yields will define whether it's true or false. Like here, if you had time to eat equals true, if time to eat, what is time to eat? Time to eat is true, so if true, so the condition is true, so it will execute whatever is within the if block. Let's try it. It's time to eat. Now, if set time to eat to false. If time to eat. What is time to eat? That's false. If false, well, that's false. So it's going to look at the statements in the else block. And it's going to say, please wait a little bit more. Okay, so that's the shorthand. You can just omit the equals here. So that's pretty much kind of, re if you want to type less, just remove that. It's going to be exactly the same thing. You're testing that for true, but you can just say that. Okay. Now, let's just uh, work with not equal to. Simple example here is 10 not equal to 6. Obviously, 10 is not equal to 6. So it's going to say the number is not equal to 6. We already touched upon that. So that's about it. Okay. Now, I would like to talk about the triple comparison operators. Don't get scared. These two right here. So uh, these are... You should know them, what they are. People like to ask about them in like kind of you know, job interviews. I was asked that. I've been asked what are what is the triple equal sign means and what is the they are the identical, not identical operators. So they're testing not only for value but for type, data type. So remember what we did here with the 2.0 right here. Let's comment this part. Let's comment this. Remember we tested for 2.0 is it equal to 2 right here? D is 2.0, right? 2.0. Let's put it back. Well, it said that 2.0 it was equal to 2, so it said the value of D is equal to 2. See? But now, if you notice, 2.0 is not an integer. It's a floating point number. Okay? And 2 is an integer. Okay? There's no decimal place for 2. But even though they had those differences, PHP said they were equal. PHP likes to cast or convert data types implicitly, so... It casted things here so that they would be the same data type and then it 
compared to true. Now, if you want to avoid, you want to get PHP to strictly check for types and not do casting behind the scenes, that's when the triple equal comes along the identical operator. So if you had triple equals, what would we get? Oh my gosh, the value of D is not equal to 2. two D is 2.0, not equal to 2, why? The triple equal operator checks whether the operands have the same value and the same type. Well, D has the same value, which is 2, but D is a floating point. 2 here is an integer different types therefore this is false this condition is false and it will say the value of d is not equal to 2 technically it should say it's not identical because that's what this operator is called identical meaning value and type have to be the same in order to be identical so they're not identical now if i put 2.0 there is 2.0 equal in value and in type. Let's change that to identical. It's going to say yes, it's true because they have the same value, which is 2, same type, floating point. Okay, now let's try this one. Hello, hello. Two strings, same value, same type. So it's going to say the operands are identical. Okay. We do it like that. Okay. Value is hell. Different from hello. Though they're both strings, but it's false because this operator checks for type and value. So it's going to say operators are either not equal in value or not equal in type. Okay, let's try this other one here. What about 1 and the string 1? What about that? Let's say here are equal. Okay. Now is 1 equals to the string 1? What does PHP do here? Wow, the operators are equal. Remember, PHP likes to implicitly cast or convert data types, so it said they were equal. Okay, now you want to be strict. This one is a string, this one is an int. I wanted them to be strictly not equal. I want PHP to be strict, and if it's a different type, it's going to say they're different. Put another equal sign to check not only the value, but the type. This is an int, this is a float, so they're not equal, right? Not identical. What we got here? The operands are either not equal in value or not equal in type. We didn't get the operands are identical because they're not. If I had one, 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 both ints, same value, well, they're identical. But one string and one integer are not the same. Well, they have the same value, to, but they're not the same type. Let's try another one. What about true? That's a Boolean value, right? It's true. Usually, we take true to be 1 and false and anything else. Now, let's try this one. Is true equals to integer 1? Let me change this to be technically correct. The operands are equal. True is equal to 1. Well, that makes sense, like, in general, because true is usually taken to be 1. 
Now, if you want to be strict, true is a Boolean type, one is an int. They're not really equal. Put another equal sign there to check if they're identical. Now, what do we get? Wow, the operands are either not equal in value or not equal in type. Because true is a Boolean. One is an integer and you're using triple equal sign. You're checking the value and the type. They're from different type. So it's going to be a false condition which will trigger the else statement which is this message. Okay. So remember this. Triple equals, equal value, and equal type. Now the other one is the not identical. It's kind of the opposite. If we are checking whether the operands are not of the same type or not of the same value. So if I do like this, true, not of the same value, or not of the same type. Well, true is a boolean, one is an integer, so it's going to say this message. Okay, so true is boolean, one is int. Obviously they have different types, so this is going to be true because this tests whether they have different types or or different values. Okay, different types, so it's going to say the operands are not equal value or not equal in type. In this case, not equal in type. Okay, see the one, what we did before. One, one. Okay, let's use this one. That's going to be false, right? Which is going to trigger the upper ends are, I should say, equal here. Or equal. Okay. Now, I want to be strict. They're not really equal in the sense they're not ident identical. So in this case, the types are different, though they're kind of the same value if you cast them. So it's going to say this condition is going to be true. And it's going to trigger this statement. The operands are not an equal in value or not equal in type. In this case, not equal in type. Okay. So that's it. And let's keep going. Just so you get a sense of the type of things, you can use the get type function here to get the type of whatever the argument is. In this case is a string. You're getting the type of an integer, you're getting the type of a string, of a boolean, of a boolean. Let's try that out. So let me comment this. Okay, so first we've had hello, a string, followed by one integer, Followed by one within double quotes, which is a string. Then a boolean true, boolean false. Another, then a set of a 28, set of variable of value 28. And I echo its type. Type of my var is integer in this case. In this case, I said no to my var. Now I get the type of my var. Now it's type no. Okay? No kind of means nothing. Nothing particular, okay? So you can use get type function if you want to find out the value of whatever the argument is and just echo that. And I put a br concatenated just to make it appear in every s each on its own line, okay? Now let's move on to shorthand notation operators. These are to make your life easier in the sense that you want to type less. Suppose I have a variable to keep track of the sum I assign initialize it to 0 and then my adding 37 the way you would add to a sum variable is just say sum equals sum plus 37 so that's gonna add 37 to 0 and you assign 37 
2 as the new value of sum. So you can see the first statement echo the sum is now 37 here. Okay. Now, you can type this line more compactly if you just say like this. You don't want to type sum twice, so you can just do plus equal. See these statements are doing the same thing as these. These are doing the same thing as that. It's just more compact here. So if you want to do this one, you just write it like this. Sum equal sum plus equal 37. It's the same thing as sum equals sum plus 37. Same thing, 37. Right? Sign to 0, add 37. That's it. You can also subtract. Let's subtract. Say sum is initialized to 40 here. And you want to say sum equals sum minus 37. That's going to be about 3, right? 3. Now, I don't want to type more. And I want to just say this. Shorthand notation. Same thing. Okay? You got it? Same thing. First the operator, then the equal sign. That works for plus, minus, multiplication, subtraction, module, concatenation. Okay? Like, let's try the one with concatenation here. Oops. So I have a uh, hello dolly assigned to a, my string. So I want to say my string is whatever the value is. I escape the dollar sign so it appears as it is. Okay. I'll remove this. Oops. What is that? Oh, I forgot to take this out. Sorry. There we are. My string is hello, Dolly. Okay. Now, do the same thing by using the Shorthand notation, remove this part, add the dot before the equal sign that will just append. Same thing as my string, append, concatenate, how do you do? The second one, same thing. See right here. So that's it for shorthand notation. Always good to use. Finally, let's talk about increment decrement. So, the way you use it, you uh, want to increase a va variable value by just one or decrease it by one. You call it increment decrement. You use plus plus to increase by one, minus minus to decrease by one. Say x is assigned to value 21. The value of x is 21 here. Okay, we're concatenating variable value with the strings. It's going to say value of x is 21. Then I do the increment operation. Dollar sign x, the variable, and I put plus plus. And I finish the statement semicolon. Now x will be incremented. That is x, which is 21, but now will become 22. The value of x is now 22. It's going to say. Let's try Again, I forgot to uncomment, sorry. Okay, that was the first one here. Value of x now is 21. The value of x is now 22. See, it? you added one with this statement. We can also decrement, that is decrease by one. Say so y is 76. The value of y is 76. In decrement operation, the value of y is now 75, right? 76 minus 1, 75. 76, 75. Okay, notice that I did minus minus before. It's the same thing as doing this in this case because it's just doing an operation on its own. And the same thing here, you could just as well do this plus plus x, same thing, nothing changed. Value of x is 21, increment x, value of x is now 22 y76, value of y76, decrement y, value of y is now 75. Okay, the same thing. 
you can just use the prefix notation in this case or the postfix notation saying the plus plus after the variable or the plus plus before the variable name now if you do like this and you know, it's online it's okay it's the same operation but there's a difference and that comes when you try to do that operation w within a line that has other stuff going on which will be explained right now postfix and prefix notation so let's say you uh, set assign 37 to the variable x the value of x is oh you do the operation right here okay so this is the postfix notation if it's postfix think about it this way first the value of x will be substituted and used in whatever you're doing here then x will be incremented okay now if you think of it that way the value of x is use the value of x 37 br okay there then you increment x x is now 38 then the next time you say what the value of x is it's going to be 38 okay did I say 36 before? Oh, th sorry, 38, okay? So, use the variable value first, increment later, after the statement execute has been executed. Now, prefix notation is the opposite. Say you have 42 assigned to y, the value of y is, well here you first increase y, the increment y then you use that new value okay what is y 42 first increment 42 to 43 use the value of y which is now 43 so it's going to say the value of y is 43 and if you say it again the value of y is now y it's going to be 43 so be careful with prefix and postfix notation if you need to first increment a value or decrement it, use the prefix notation. But if you need to use the current value and then increment it after the statement is executed, use postfix. Same thing with plus minus minus plus plus. Okay, it's going to be what here? Thirty-seven, thirty-six, and here first decrement forty-one. Say the value 41, 41, 41. Okay. That's about it of prefix and postfix notation. And it's very important to remember the difference on these, okay? All right, if you like my video, please subscribe. If you have any requests, please send me a message, post a comment. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.